Hi everybody. Welcome to this week's video. Today we will get to know how the electric current reaches our home. Come let's see the journey of electricity. First let me brief you on electricity. Electricity refers to the phenomena of movement of electric charge. It is a form of energy. Electricity is what actually flows through the electric lines and cables into the appliances. Electricity is most often generated at a power plant by electromechanical generators. Primarily driven by heat engines fueled by combustion or nuclear fission. But also by other means such as the kinetic energy of flowing water and wind. Other energy sources include solar photovoltaics and geothermal power. Electricity generation is comprised of three main steps. Generation, Transmission, Distribution. Now we will see the complete process in detail. This is the overview of the journey of electricity to our homes. Now let us see each stage in detail. The first stage is electricity generation. The electricity is made at a generating station by huge generators. The generator, a rotating machine that converts mechanical power into three-phase electric power. The relative motion between a magnetic field and conductor creates an electric current. Generating stations may use wind, coal, natural gas, or water. In the next stage the current is sent through transformers to increase the voltage to push the power long distances. A transformer is used for reducing or increasing the voltage of an alternating current. The electrical charge goes through high voltage transmission lines that stretch across the country. It then reaches a substation where the voltage is lowered so it can be sent on smaller power lines. A substation is a part of an electrical generation, transmission, and distribution system. Substations transform voltage from high to low, or the reverse, or perform any of several other important functions. Generally substations are unattended, relying on SCADA for remote supervision and control. It then travels through distribution lines to your neighborhood. Smaller transformers reduce the voltage again to make the power safe to use in our homes. These smaller transformers may be mounted on the poles. Or sitting on the ground, they are the big green boxes, called pad mount transformers. It connects to your house, and passes through a meter that measures how much your family uses. The electricity goes to the service panel in your basement or garage, where breakers or fuses protect the wires inside your house from being overloaded. The electricity travels through wires inside the walls to the outlets and switches all over your house. This is how we receive electricity at home. Bacteria are all around us. Some are harmful, some are beneficial, but all of them breathe. When they breathe oxidation occurs, which is when something combines with oxygen at a chemical level. And when bacteria do this, electrons are released. By connecting breathing microbes to a cathode and an anode, the flow of these released electrons can be harnessed to generate power. This is what's known as a microbial fuel cell. MFC are used largely to generate electricity from wastewater, but are expanding into more exotic uses, like powering miniature aquatic robots. New developments are constantly expanding the power and applications of MFC. Researchers at Binghamton University, New York found that combining phototropic and heterotrophic bacteria in microbial fuel reactions generates currents 70 times more powerful than in conventional setups. This is how the microbial fuel works. Shannon Yee, 
an assistant professor in Georgia Tech's George W. Woodruff School of Mechanical Engineering, is developing a technology that leverages the isothermal expansion of sodium and solar heat to directly generate electricity. Electricity is generated from solar heat by thermally driving a sodium redox reaction on opposite sides of a solid electrolyte. The resulting positive electrical charges pass through the solid electrolyte due to an electrochemical potential produced by a pressure gradient. While the electrons travel through an external load where electric power is extracted. That's it for today's video. Hope you understood how electricity reaches our home. Kindly keep supporting DRM Engineering. Also do subscribe to the channel if you haven't. We'll get back to you with the next video.